Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, everybody who is here. Hello, hello. Sorry, I'm like a couple minutes late. Okay. All right, cool. Hello. Good, good evening. How is everybody? I hope you're doing well. How's up, Night Spade? How is up? I hope I don't keep making those like silly mistakes tonight, but I am pretty tired, so <laughs> we will see. Um, yeah, so hello and welcome. If you're new to this segment, uh, I take about five minutes to get ready, so go and grab your... Um, your tea or your coffee or whatever it is, if you're going to participate, uh, it's more than more than welcome. Basically, what I do during these segments uh, is I take this sphere that you see on the screen, mash it around a whole bunch, and kind of find a whole bunch of random shapes and stuff, and kind of try to see what it could possibly turn into. I'm not really going off of any reference. This is sort of just an exercise to practice shape language and just see where my imagination takes me. It's a lot of fun to do when you're tired and you don't feel like working, aka right now, <laughs> because as soon as you start doing it, you get really into it and then you, you start getting um, a little bit more motivated as well. It's good for you know getting through art blocks and things of that nature. It's just doing it for yourself so if you do want to join in, Pixelogic offers a 45 day free trial of ZBrush. Uh, but if you don't want to sculpt and you want to just draw, you're more than welcome to draw along as well. Just drawing uh, this way, this exercise works for drawing as well. It's actually how I started, is by doing this in 2D first uh, before jumping into 3D. So join away, join away. And feel free to post your works in the chat. And feel free to ask any questions along the way as well. Just chill, Sesh. Just chill. My name is Ashley. Hello. I go by A Cubed on Twitch. So if you want to tag me during these segments as well, just keep in mind uh, it's not at Pixelogic, it is at A underscore Cubed, as is on the bottom of the screen over there. All right? Because then I'll see your name in red. Otherwise, it just goes to Pixelogic. And I'm not on Pixelogic's, uh, Pixelogic's account. Hey Umer, Sneak, Imaginator, Geo, hello, hello. Hey Dry Otter, EOP, hello, Mad Duck. All right, so we're gonna get started. Just, just relax. Okay. And uh, another thing that I want to um, point out to you guys is not to be afraid if this doesn't look like anything and don't be discouraged for the first little while that you're working on it. Uh, usually when you're sculpting something like this without a design and you're just kind of like jumping into it, it can be very overwhelming at first, but that's sort of like the hurdle that you want to try and get through and try and get past. Um, by doing something like this is just try to let let it go let you know just let the sculpt be man that sounds so artsy fartsy but just kind of just 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 let it do what it wants to do you know just try and find try and find some interesting shapes so what I do normally is I just kind of like uh, you know go into symmetry mode and just kind of like smash this around a whole bunch do like I haven't done anything like super intensely like crazy lately so I'm just gonna like really like pull this a whole bunch and see where that ends up. Already we're getting some like really interesting sort of things here. So I, I actually kind of like this. And once you start kind of like getting like some kind of a shape, you, you wanna, especially when you're getting like this kind of... Um, this stretching here. I usually don't, I don't mind this sort of a thing right off the bat, but in order to get rid of that, uh, I work at a really low uh, Dynamesh resolution, so it, I still maintain some of these lines and things that actually are created by the stretching, because then you can 
continue working with, you know, that randomness that you get after like pulling things out a whole bunch of ways in every which direction that you want. You can start getting some really neat looking things, so still not 100% sure what this is, but my brush is a little on the, uh, the small side, so I'm going to actually scale this entire thing down a bit. And the reason why I do that is so that my dynamic brush maintains like, you know, by uh, by hitting it to the max size in dynamic mode, it will actually still be a large brush. I like using dynamic. But I know some people don't. Hey Dark, how are you? Want to know if it's better to save in ZPR or in ZTL when you're sculpting and when you start ZBrush, if you create a ball, then misclick somewhere on the screen, why can't I come back to the draw mode? Um, okay, so sneak, uh, if you misclick, so like let's say I'm not in draw mode and then I misclicked and you're just like, oh crap, and then you know, like that's, now this is your, you know, your draw mode or whatever. If you misclicked, just control N, it will clear your canvas and then try drawing out again and then pressing T to go into edit mode. Um, is it better to save in ZPR or ZTL when you're sculpting? Z so the difference between the two is ZPR is going to uh, save your whole project file. That can save all of uh, basically everything here. So like if I had, if I was using like all of this stuff here, then it would save all of that. And it would also save within each of these all of the subtools that are there and all of the history if you say that you want all of the history to be saved. So you can imagine those files get very, very large. If you don't need that, if you only need to be saving the one subtool, if you only need to be saving the one, uh, the one tool, basically what you do is you save a ZTL uh, up in the tool, the tool palette instead of over in the uh, the project area you can save it in the tool palette and that will actually give you a much smaller file but you won't have all of your saves uh your your history basically you won't have any of that but i usually save with ztls because i don't need the history i just save increments as i'm working um because then you save a lot of space hey nifty Red White Knight. <laughs> I'm yeah, I'm doing well. Am I working on the art station challenge? No, I don't I, I don't have time to like spend on ten whole designs for that. Hey, Mos uh Mostran Mostran Domner. <laughs> How are you? Okay, back to this. Anyways, back to kind of like trying to find some crazy shapes. So again, like the idea is to just try and figure out if you can see something here. And I'm not 100% sure that I really like see anything yet. So I'm probably gonna like keep pushing this until I maybe like see something. And another thing that you should keep in mind too when you're doing something like this is don't be afraid to like just just kill it. Like if you don't if you don't see anything and it's just not working, and the shapes are just looking really stupid to you, then you can just like start over. Like, don't don't hold your artwork precious, basically. Almost, it's this is almost like a a little bit like of a of an orchid sort of a thing. Like it's almost like flower based. So again, like I'm not worrying about topology when I do this at all. That's something that I really want to stress to people is you don't need to worry about topology at all when you're doing this. Think of it more like 
This is this is like a ball of clay, and you're really just like pressing it around a whole bunch, and not to. <laughs> that actually looks kind of cute. I don't want that. <laughs> But yeah, not to not to really like worry too much about um, stretching and things like that, especially at this stage, because it doesn't it really doesn't matter. Like you can immediately change that with a uh, dynamesh. So like all of this stretching, I don't care about this right now at all. Like literally like it's not, this isn't something I'm worried about right now. <laughs> Every time somebody messes up your name, you love it. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> I'm glad you find it humorous though. You might do something along the lines of the art station challenge just to give you a guideline for some person. Yeah, see, you could totally do that. Just do it for your own portfolio, you know? Like, you don't, even if you don't hit the deadline, it, that's what the art station challenges really are, is just to, like, get you thinking, you know? Get you working. Hey, Mighty. Finally fill your art station soon. You just need to get the yes from another artist whose concept. Ah, okay, cool. Let me let me know if the uh, the music gets too loud for you guys because I I don't know if this is too loud or not. Final Fantasy or something out of Dark Souls? Like literally everything I do, everybody's just like, yo, this has got to be out of Dark Souls, right? I wish. <laughs> What's today's theme? Oh, yeah, I guess I don't really have that up. I totally forgot about that. So today's theme, we're gonna do Orchid. Here we go. Or like flowers or something. Something that's just sort of like a, a general word to go off of. Wow, yeah, this feels really loud. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, it doesn't necessarily have to be a creature based on an orchid or anything like that. It just, like, what do you think of when you think of an orchid? Like, maybe it's all of the different petals being the segre uh, segregations of, like, you know, some some crests on his head, which is sort of like what I'm doing right here. You know, maybe when you think of orchid, you just think of like, you know, what the colors do and... Or maybe you think of the pollen or the inner stem area, you know, like just, it's sort of like a word to just kind of like bounce off of. That's what I, I put those, uh, those themes up there for. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to go off of that uh, specifically. Orchids? You know what? Honestly, if that, yeah, if you think of orcs when you think of an orchid, then, uh, I'll power to you. Oh, oh. <laughs> Look at his tiny little eyes! Ah! 
Uh, that's good. There we go. So when you when you shrink something down, you have to remember to adjust your Dynamesh resolution accordingly. So here I'm going to start trying to get like, you know, a little bit more of a interesting uh, balance with this guy. In terms of like the weight of the concept, I always want to be thinking about the like the overall weight. And when I mean what I mean by that is just like you know how how the shapes are looking. So if I have like a lot going on here, how does that counterbalance on the other side? Plant mind flare type creature, Elusid. Oh yeah. Hey Toby. The cute pixel version, I know. <laughs> Actually, we could probably do something where. Uh... do that. Now I had to try and think about, okay, well, this this jaw bit here doesn't really look like it would close. So I'm gonna try and work that a little bit more. Maybe pull something right here. Oops. And I'm not worried about stretching, like, at all. This is not something that concerns me. I can just go and fix that. Thinking about what it looks like on the profile versus what it looks like in the front. Alright, now this is still looking a little bit silly. Pull that out.
right, let's start cutting this up a little bit. It's scary as always, but with a cute face. <laughs> yeah, not anymore. To say it's so awesome to have. Oh, thanks, Dark. I appreciate it. I'm glad to have you here. Hey, Drews. Drusifer. Yeah, we could actually that's a good point. It does kind of look like a little bit of like a witch, almost like it's wearing some sort of like a witch hat. So, going off of what you said, we could think of it sort of like that. And I'm thinking more of like a swamp, like it would be dwelling in the swamps. So, I'm going to try and make it maybe a little bit more amphibian. Amphibian like Basically, I want these like these things to kind of feel like little, little like flowery petal things. I'm curious about that though. See how that works. Might have to really play with that for the design to work. <laughs> Almost like the Demogorgon from Stranger Things. They weren't the first ones to do the, uh, the petal mouth idea. They did do it very, very well. And I'm actually thinking of uh, doing a bit of like a, a hair thing. I know that might sound a little bit weird, not like like actual hair, but sort of like tendrils that make it look like it's got like wet hair-ish things hanging down from it. To really make it like, I, I guess sort of like going off of that like swamp hag sort of an idea. If it was like a hag, but it's not actually like a person, it's just like a creature. But they call it the swamp hag. Yeah, it's a good show. What's my file resolution? What do you mean my file? Like, you mean my document size?
Um, I'm I am G3RM. I'm using a Wacom Intuos Pro Medium. Looks like this. The document size. I'm using my res my monitor resolution, um, 1920 by 1080. fix up this face area because right now it, I think this looks really stupid right here like his his face area looks really really not not helping you know not helping so we're gonna fix that What do you think about the ones that you use to draw on the screen? I love Cintiqs personally, like I really, really enjoy it. Um, but I can't afford one right now. <laughs> but if you if you can get your hands on a Cintiq, I recommend it. It's just uh, you do need to take more breaks um, and be very mindful of your posture when using a Cintiq. Hey Mares! How's up? <laughs> Yeah, it's got a, um, yeah, a pollen tongue. That's sort of like what I was thinking of. Oh my gosh, Mighty. <laughs> AC, or JC, how are you? Hi, Ex Exodia, sorry. <laughs> Crazy name. About making texture and UV map on Cubbix characters. Uh, tutorials or videos, good free rendering and posing. Um, I don't, I don't really have any like, I don't really have any uh, good um, UV tutorials that I could like point you in. But uh, <sighs> mm. I don't know, chat. Do you guys have like any for for what Exodia is asking for? Do you guys have any um, any any idea of any tutorials for complex characters? Like usually, I, I surface characters uh, for work as well. And the thing is, like, I just kind of think of it as uh, if something has a repeating bit that you're just going to keep like basically you you do one of them and then you just duplicate in terms of like the model like you duplicate it uh back over to the other parts so you don't have to keep re reuving like the complicated parts um but yeah i don't i don't really have any like video tutorials for you i'm sorry and in terms of like the program that I use for UVing, I use Maya typically and uh, rendering. I usually for the illustration stuff or the concept stuff that I do for paint overs, I usually go with uh, Keyshot, but I have done rendering with V-Ray in, um, in Maya. And uh, if you, another, actually another good uh, software that you could use for, um, 
for unwrapping is uh, well, you could you could try using uh, ZBrush as well has an unwrap tool, which is very nice. But for really complicated objects, you could use uh, what's it called? Hedis UV layout. Hedis UV layout is actually really, really great. Uh, going back to school for animation, you have bachelor's in drawing. You think it's a good idea to go back to school just for animation. Basically, we'd be taking five classes in animation for bachelor's in animation. Honestly, if you want to be an animator and uh, and you want to go to school for animation, I'd say yeah, but do your research first. Make sure that the school that you're going to um, is worth it. Like, I last thing that I would want anyone to do is go to school pay thousands and thousands of dollars and just you know it's not really like you know the professionals there are not actually like professional and that's the case for some of these schools so just be careful um and just like just uh just just look look into look into who who the professors are do they have do they have a lot of uh, understanding of the industry have they worked in it how long ago did they work in the industry etc cetera, etc cetera. because i find um I find that there are like schools that hire people and they yeah they they can animate but they might not give you the best uh, tools that you need to be working in the industry to this date you know that might have been good 10 years ago but it's not like up to date Uh, yes, you can absolutely make a living in animation. I went to school, got my bachelor's of animation, I was gonna be an animator, and then I decided, nah, I like sculpting too much. I like concept work. <laughs> I like modeling. Unfold 3D, haven't heard of that one. Online courses? I honestly, I'm not the one to, to ask for something like that. I know that there are, uh, oh, actually, what is that? Um, I animate is actually pretty decent from what I hear. But that's, that's just uh, from what I hear. Anyways, if you're looking for animation, because it's like a bunch of guys that used to work at like Pixar and DreamWorks and stuff like that. So if you're looking into that, they've also got like a game, game animation. Uh, like people have worked on game animation as well so it's not just like animated feature films
Did I learn animation in Maya? Uh, no, actually, I start. I was more of a traditional animator when I was in school. But that's not really something that's huge in this industry anymore. And I kind of lost a like. I I kind of just realized that I just generally like creating uh, characters and stuff. So I fell out of it. Some artists use checkerboard texture to see the UV. Yep. No, a lot. A lot of artists actually do that. That's uh, something that you should do. Is when you're checking your UVs, use a checker pattern or you know the colored checker with the numbers on it and stuff like that. Uh, modeling is very different from animation. Yeah, it is. Uh, animation, you're basically taking the models. You're taking what somebody has already created and uh, making it move and act. So you're taking a puppet and making it act. The modeler is the person who makes the puppet, basically. Uh, the rigger is making the puppet uh, functional, right? Like the rigger is somebody who makes it uh, able to be moved by the animator. Uh, was it scary giving up the animation career I had or did I not mind? Oh, I never had a career in animation. Um, I just kind of like said that I just, I just kind of decided like I just didn't really want to do it. And another opportunity had presented itself to me, so I said, why not try it? And I ended up loving it, so. <laughs> yeah, no, those, uh, those, those, um, those don't work here, <laughs> mighty, thanks, though. Well, is collectibles industry, but you're learning video game workflow as well, just in case. No, oh, yeah, you've got some really nice stuff. Honestly, like, I think the the one thing that I would say is, yeah, you should do things just in case. But honestly, you should like if 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 it is collectibles that you want to do, if that's truly what you want to do, then like really put your all into it and. And why not try getting uh, getting something that you've modeled, printed out, and try seeing how that would mold and cast, and just like really like really focus on that and show show potential employers um, that you know what goes into making models for the collectible industry. Now I don't know a whole ton about it because I'm not, I, I don't make a whole bunch of collectibles. I've made uh, sculpts for people, uh, different clients for collectibles, but ultimately if uh, things needed to be changed, like I would just do as they were asking because I'm, I haven't actually personally tried to print any of my stuff out, but if you did, that would be a asset. Right, and that goes for really any any part of uh, any part of the art industry that you're trying to get into is just you know work through every step of it and understand every step of it, even if even if it's not the part that you're going to be going for. If that's truly truly what you want, though. What job am I create? Are what job are for creating characters? Um, so if you're if you're a concept artist, like oh well, okay, okay. So what I think your question means is, uh, what do character artists do? I guess is that what is that? Hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, Tyler M. Could you like rephrase your question? I'm not gonna assume what you're you're talking about. Uh, how long did it take? me to get into this industry i got i got into the industry right out of school like directly out of school um i was i got a little bit like i was lucky to have that opportunity presented to me but i did work my butt off in order to get something to show in order to uh in order to actually get that first job because the school that I went to, it was not a 3D based school at all. It was it was more focused on animation and you know, just get get your bachelor's, just get that piece of paper. It wasn't really uh, wasn't really focused on uh, you know 
any 3D aspects. So I that all that kind of stuff I learned on my own time. Meanwhile, still trying to finish a uh, a short film on my own, which everybody else had to as well within the span of eight months. And that was definitely a challenge, but by doing that, I understood, you know, what really like goes into what what goes into the entire process. Like, okay, well, now I know, now I know how I really don't like rigging and I respect the riggers when they, they're they they like, yo, I can't do this with your model. I'm like, okay, yeah, no problem. I'll fix that for you because, yeah, I don't like rigging and I respect you for going through this and making a career out of it. Hey, Torda, how are you? from the same planet as the predator is fun yeah maybe what are some job names where you create characters oh okay job names so you could be a uh you could be a character concept artist you could be a creature concept artist character artist uh modeler character modeler basically anything anything to do with character in the in the title you're creating characters unless it's like something like a character td in which case you're not creating characters, but you're making it work. Um, then you're working with like fur and grooming and stuff like that. But if you want to like make the base of the character, it would be like a title called character artist or um, character modeler, basically. But you only have one thing there and can't release your main project. Yeah, it's okay, monster or monstren. Painting weights was nightmarish. Yeah, uh-uh. Yeah, it will, yeah, anything with like senior or lead in front of it means you're still doing the same thing as the job, except it's like you get to choose what parts of it. And you get to delegate. Okay. So this, this guy thinking
It's important to learn anatomy, to be a character artist. You never draw in your life, but you do sculpt in mostly environments, props. Yes, absolutely. If you want to be a character artist, you have to know anatomy. You have to know anatomy. You have to be practicing anatomy. You never stop practicing anatomy. If you're not practicing human anatomy, start so practice something from like creatures or something like your dog, sculpt your dog. I don't know. Just be sculpting anatomy all the time. Like, cause that's, yeah, just, just learn. <laughs> did I go to school in Toronto? Yes, I did. Uh, well, Ontario, generally speaking. Uh, can I release your my project based on a, on a concept art on ArtStation before I get the permission? Links to his ArtStation, everything included, or should I just wait? Um. So okay, so that's that's interesting. Uh, it, that really depends. Okay, so that really depends on what this art is because um usually usually artists are pretty okay with you making a 3d representation of their you know of their concept as long as you give them full credit for the concept and you link back to their work and you make sure that everybody knows like you didn't come up with this idea you're just the modeler um but if this is something that you're going to be profiting off of, I wouldn't do that at all. Like I would, I would be talking to the, I would be talking to the other artists. Like if this is something that isn't just for your portfolio, you know, if you're, if, uh, if you're going to make any kind of money off of it, you need to talk to that person and be like, Hey, like, is this okay? Like, can we work on a deal? Cause they're usually not going to be okay with that. <laughs> Or if it's like for an existing IP that they're making, for example, and then you go and do that with their concept, they might not be okay with that either. Um, but if it was just like a sketch or something, nine times out of 10, they will be okay with it. But to be safe, you want to like wait for permission in order to use their concept. Uh, if you buy a new ZBrush at the moment, do you get ZBrush to Keyshot option or do you have to pay separately for that? Yeah, you have to pay separately for ZBrush to Keyshot. So you need, so if you want um, the key, sh basically ZBrush or Keyshot for ZBrush is one license and then the bridge is another license. Um, but together, those two licenses are already like way cheaper than if you were to buy Keyshot by itself. I'm sorry, Babu. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, I specialized in animation when I went to school. Want digital? Yeah, Canada's got a lot. Um, so does so do the states, though. The states have a lot. Do you think you should focus more on sculpting 2D concepts or do em employers value more your own original creative sculpt? Uh, honestly, it, okay, that really depends. Like that 100% depends on what you want to do. I would say, I would say if you want to be a modeler, then yeah, you want to focus on, you know, creating other people's like other 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 people's uh, concepts because that's what an employer is going to look for is, you know, how, how do you interpret somebody else's 2D concept, can you do that? Um, but if you, uh, but besides that, um, a, a, an employer is also going to look for somebody who's able to take that, like their own artistic, uh, you know, mind and make their own artistic decisions and choices and stuff like that in a very intelligent way. So if you were to create your own concept as well, uh, that would be a very good addition to your portfolio. But if you wanted to be a modeler, always like, you know, look on, look at like creating something from something else, basically. That would be your main focus. But if you have time to do something else, then, uh, then yeah, you could create like, you know, your own concept as well. But I would say have, have examples in your portfolio of, uh, of you kind of like making um, other people's other people's work or other people's concepts, sorry. <laughs> but you know, always, always, always credit the person who who is the original designer because that's how they make their living as well.
key shot. <laughs> Misheard key shot as key shot. <laughs> yeah, it's just a little, just a little bit of quiche in the morning, you know? Not a lot, just a little bit of quiche. Just have yourself a key shot. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Only compatible with eggs brush. <laughs> Much happier if you could wake up to quiche every day, right? That would be pretty sweet. It's working out really well. That's great to hear, Sumerian. Yeah, quiche is really great. I I enjoy it. It's it's good for um it's good for like really quick quick renders, but just know that it's not really like something to use in uh like you know an animation production pipeline or anything like that. You would just use it for like concept pieces or quick you know quick beauty renders stuff like that. All right, goodbye, uh, Dark. Thanks for thanks for hanging out. Hope you have a great night. Oh man, okay, I'm gonna delete this. I don't like this one. This is not working. Hey Bring, what's up? Full loaded for 10 days, six of, yeah. Yeah, no, it isn't, it's not, uh, it's not for like an animation pipeline, but yes, you can bring animation into Keyshot. It's just not really, it's, uh, it's not, it's not for that sort of a thing. Thank you. 
snake hook brush better than the move brush? Uh, that really depends on you as a person, how you like to work. Um, we like I like to work is I like to like randomly smash things around like a spaz. I'm a little bit chaotic when I'm doing this stuff. Not everybody, not everybody works the same way that I do, and that's completely understandable. But the way that I work, I'm just a little bit of a freaking spaz. So I like the snake hook brush because it's also a spaz. It's a spaz brush. Um, you'll notice like if the difference between snake hook and move is the snake hook just pulls things really fast and it doesn't even care about like a limitation to how far you can pull something. Move brush is more method methodic and well thought out and like you're moving things with a purpose and snake hook I'm just like bah! So it really depends on you as a person. Keyshot for renders, still trying to add the beauty though. <laughs> Don't worry, Sumerian. Like, honestly, uh, with Keyshot, what I'd like to do is make like a multiple passes of things. So maybe your whole character can be like, you know, even if it's not a metallic character, you could put a metallic shader on it and do, uh, do a few like different shaders, like of the entire thing like that and then do a clown pass and then in Photoshop just kind of like mask things out, make things, you know, multiply layers or overlay layers or screen layers and just kind of like start painting over some stuff and just create something out of that. Um, I don't spend a ton of time making sure all of my shaders and key shot are perfect because that's not what it's like, that's not what I use the program for. I use it as like you know, this is like real real lighting and I don't have to worry about that in a painting. Like, this is just like, boom, there's my lighting. There's like, you know, my really nice looking materials and now I can just paint over it or and like stamp stuff around in, in Photoshop and it's just like a lot faster. <laughs> oh my goodness, Maris, that was very vivid. <laughs> that was very vivid. Where is that mirror button's original location? The mirror button is uh, in at, the mirror button right here is in deformation, the deformation tab in your tool palette. Um, but I uh, I I also use you'll find uh, geometry in the geometry tab, modify topology, mirror, and weld. You could also use that. Like you don't have to just use the mirror, and they work a little bit differently in terms of like this one will do the duplicating for you. All right, so I'm gonna play around with getting this pose. I wanna get this like, I get a nice looking pose. Okay, so this like 
this witchy thing I think I'm gonna ditch. I don't think I like the witch idea with this guy. He is leaning more towards like uh, he it, look, it feels like he would be more um, camouflaged with like twigs sort of like a stick bug in a sense and using that uh, flower sort of thing. I just don't want it to be like a concept soup and that's something that uh, that can easily happen when you're doing something like this is you start getting like tons of ideas of what it could be and then it becomes concept soup uh, we don't want concept soup because then it's just like okay well what 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 is this this is too much this is like can it just be a thing and stick to that thing so when you start getting too many ideas it's not so great <laughs> you gotta kind of like Think, okay, what does this want to be? You know, kill your babies in a sense. No concept soup. We ain't cooking here. Uh, when I finish the bug model is my favorite model. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. If you guys want to see, um, hey, AFX. Hi, Purchase Harpy. Doing well. <laughs> Nothing wrong with my spaz technique. All right. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, if you guys want to see, hold on, I'll save this really quick. Um, I apologize for my like my low energy tonight. I'm so sorry. I hope you guys are okay with that. Like some days this whole week has just been a little bit off for me. So I'm just gonna save this really quick and then uh, and then we will, I'll show you guys what the bug uh, looks like in ZBrush. Like I won't show you like the renders or anything like that yet because I'm not done with uh, the paint over. But uh, I can show you what the poly paint, like the quick, the quick poly paint ended up looking like, which I did over on my channel. Here we is. Hey Zach, what's up? So I brought him over to my channel on uh, on Twitch uh, after this was from the last episode, like last week. Sorry, I brought this guy over to my channel, and I just kind of like I kind of pushed the design a little bit. So what we ended up with at the end of the Pixo stream was this. And then I kind of like pushed the design more, basically. Like I just kind of like pushed the silhouette, made it functional, right? So we, we cut, like I cut all of this up so then it looks like it could actually like move. And then I just kind of like pushed the creepiness. Like it already looked like a parasite. So the idea was to just kind of like really like push that like ugly parasite. Like it does not have any like, any sort of, niceness with it whatsoever basically just looks like a sea anus <laughs> but yeah like uh, that that was sort of like the idea so just kind of like push just really push the design um get the, the little furs in there and just make it really nasty right if i turn off all of whoops if i turn off all of this then we can get a, you can see a little bit better what i mean by like just pushing the design further What a scene has cannot be unseen. Yep, I know. <laughs> All right, good night, Babu. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, everybody wish Daddy happy birthday. What is my? Where does my inspiration come from? Not everyone can move this basic ball so quickly and do, and do what they want to do in three in three D. Oh, in in thirties. Oh yeah, you know, honestly, sneak. Don't don't worry about it. Just like have have patience with yourself. I think that's like. That's the big thing is uh, don't get angry when you can't create something that you really, really want to really want to make. You just want to like have, I, I think the biggest thing uh, with this sort of like concept sculpting and stuff is to just, just have fun in 3D. 
Um, don't put pressure on yourself and and just be doing it a lot, you know? And just do it, like, just do it every day. Just do something every single day. Even if it's only like an hour. And where does my inspiration come from? Look at, look at, <laughs> my a lot of my inspiration comes from uh, just looking at nature. Um, sparsely looking at art station because the more you look at art station uh, it can actually I, I find anyways like just like art sites in general where you just see like this massive amount of artwork that's constantly coming in it's just flooded it actually like kills your mojo um, at least that's that's the way that it is for me I'm sure it is that way for other people too if it is for me um, because you're, you, it just kind of like it gets o so oversaturated that you're just looking at everything and you just start thinking to yourself, wow, everything's just been done already. And you just see so much that it's an overstimulus and anything in excess becomes a problem, including when you're just looking at too much art. So I'd say, yeah, peruse a little bit, but don't obsess over it and don't constantly be looking at other people's artwork, you know, like you're allowed to like <laughs> you're allowed to keep looking at it obviously i'm not telling you what to do but i just i think that it's best to limit um the amount you know like you just don't don't go crazy with it because it can kind of it can kind of ruin your mojo like if you're doing too much of that is that a complicated uh, completed design of the parasite it looks oh thanks tree yeah it was um that was the uh that was yeah that was basically the 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 finished it's it's not like i didn't render it out or paint over it yet but yeah be a bob ross happy accidents and endure the honestly that is the best that is the best way to look at all of this like the stiffer you are about like learning artwork and uh you know concept design and all that kind of stuff the stiffer you are as a person the stiffer your artwork's gonna be and it will show because it you know your artwork your stylus your pen your pencil it feels your fear if you i know that sounds so stupid but if you don't feel that fear if you're just like you know what, whatever if it's not good i can always throw it away and start a new one you're gonna notice you're gonna get some really good stuff out of that because you don't care, you don't, you know, you're not so stiff. But it feels your fear, so. <laughs> so don't be afraid. Just have faith in the process. Have faith in yourself that you will create something great if you keep at it. But don't, don't be uh, dissuade or, you know, don't feel terrible when, when you create something really crappy. Because guess what? I've created my fair share of crappy things that do not see the light of day. Oh, yes I did. And yes I do. Ah. <sighs> <sighs> Yeah, if you put pressure on yourself, like, I mean, pressure to sit down and start working, you should do that. But, you know, don't, don't kill yourself if it's not looking good. Because everybody's got to start somewhere. And the truth is, if you join, if you, if you're, if you're in the art industry, if you just like art in general, everybody's got to start somewhere and no one ever stops anywhere at all like you just keep going like there is no stopping in terms of improvement you just keep you keep working towards it. you keep getting better you keep getting better there's no cap of improvement so as long as you understand that then it might be easier for you to kind of get through the tough times because you realize there is no end goal oh that sounds depressing <laughs> You'll never be as good as you want to be. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but there is a there is an ounce of truth in that. There's a little bit of truth. You just don't put too much pressure on yourself.
All right, now you guys know what I like to do with this sort of a thing is uh, really push the silhouette. So right now this looks kind of tiny. I want this to really stand out because we've already got these really long limbs. We've got all this like long stuff. So my solution to that will be first, we're going to cut this head off. We're gonna decapitate our creature. And now we're going to grab these bits Dope. <laughs> Dope. This guy didn't get m moved forward. Forgot to grab him. Because of that, I'm probably going to take these, pull this back a little bit, make sure we're getting that length that we need there, and there we go. Just kind of like making sure we've got the balance going with this. I don't like the idea of these being scales. It's not working with the design. So I'm going to kill that. Feeling down on a project you were working on this morning, uh, you just used a swirl brush to add a whole bunch of wackiness to it. You ended up with something much cooler. Don't be afraid to destroy your work. Exactly, Rabbit. Honestly, and don't be afraid to ex experiment with things. Like, save iterations of your project. So just in case you like really mess it up, you can always go back to it if you really liked, you know, some aspect of the design that you had started. But at the same time, like, if it if you really destroy your project, just don't don't be afraid to just completely restart. Like that's, unless like you're on a time, time constraint of some sort, then, you know, maybe, maybe don't always restart, but <laughs> you know what I mean, I'm hoping. He's been like walking around with one leg this whole time. Whoopsies!
All right, so we gotta make this look a little bit better here. I'm thinking... Move this forward. <laughs> Looks silly right now. We'll fix it. Hey, Reggie, how are you? How are you doing? I understood. I understood. I understood. Uh, an idea for another stream, make an organic mecha robot. Oh man, an organic, an or organic robot. Mm. Mm. <laughs> the thing, the thing with like any kind of like robot stuff is that it, it does take a little, a little while to get something that looks refined, which is why I like to do, um, straight up like organic creature stuff on these streams and just kind of like demo that because at the end of like a mech like any kind of like a mech stream that i would do which by the way like i'm not like super well versed in mech design or anything of that nature so if i uh if i were to start a a mech stream we would probably not end up with uh a full <laughs> a full kind of concept at the end of it With design ideas for the riot competition has been pretty fun oh sweet nice a little better today oh that's good to hear what is this it's just uh just uh, some random concept really So this is, uh, it's probably gonna be a bit of pushing, pushing this around to make it feel right. Actually, we could probably...
Is it for a game? No, nope. no, not necessarily. Just sort of a uh, just concepting, just free sculpting sandbox sculpt session basically. Um, kind of showing guys how to just come up with something out of your heads. Just have fun with the with the clay. Sort of an idea. What do I have on custom brushes, mostly for inorganic sculpts? Custom brushes? I actually mostly use default brushes, to be honest. The stuff that, the, the vanilla stuff that comes with the program. Um, but other than that, um, I've got stuff from Pablo ZBrush Guides. Uh, and I do have the Orb Crack brushes, but I don't actually use them. I just have them. Um, is there anything else in here? I've got some stuff from, uh, what's it called? Mm, monster or, mm, they give a bunch of like brush packs. I can't remember what it's called. Hmm. If you guys like remember, if you can remember. <laughs> what it was that I got the saliva of spit from. <laughs> the Ma brushes? Oh yes, I got, yes, Ma brushes. Ma, uh, the M-E-H cut brushes I use as well. And that's about it. That's about it for the custom stuff. Hey Poseidon! Or Warcraft brushes? You love <laughs> the Warcraft brushes, yeah. Bad King, yes, thank you! Thank you so much, Knight. Yeah, I use uh, I use some some things from Bad King as well. Do I work for a company or just as a freelancer? Um right now I'm working for a on an animated feature film, yeah. I actually, I was working in studio for a year and then I decided I wanted to go remote and the company was gracious enough to let me do so. And so now I'm remote, but still working on the film, which is pretty dope. And, um, and a freelancer on top of that, yes. But also moonlighting as a streamer. <laughs> hey Nugget, thank you so much. <laughs> I, I think Pixlogic is very talented too. <laughs> No, if you if you want to um, if you want to tag me in anything, it's at a underscore cubed. I'm not actually like the Pixelogic channel. I'm not on the Pixelogic channel. I'm streaming to the Pixelogic channel. Or blah, 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 blah. tongue twister. Yeah, Shane Olson is amazing. Fantastic, fantastic guy. All all of the streamers here, honestly, they're all really great. You should check them out. And speaking of which, here's plug time. Mm go and smash that follow button on the Pixelogic channel. Thank you very much. Especially if you're enjoying this. Do, we, do you win anything or is it just respect? Just, um, just, uh, how's up, knight? How's up? You think about games that are more about the art or like a movie like Hellblade, for example, Pablo is great. Yeah, no, Pablo is fantastic. 
Um, games that are more about the art. Uh, yeah, that's that's totally fine. That's fine by me. Um, but when it's like the thing is like when it's when, when it's a movie and I I feel like it's like I don't know if it's basically I'm fine with it if it's all about the art and I'm buying it knowing that it's about the art and that's like the main focus of it. If it's advertised as something else and I go in expecting like this really deep and crazy story and everything and I don't get anything out of it then I'll be a little bit disappointed but I'll still be very like awe-inspired by the art if it is all about the art and I will respect that but when you're making a full game or you're making a movie my personal opinion has always been like that is an art form in itself and to focus on only one aspect of it is it kind of like it's limiting and I feel like it could just be more you know like I just feel like I feel like <sighs> like okay here's an example um that I've had arguments about before is Batman v Superman now <laughs> this is gonna yeah so Batman v Superman I did not think was a good overall film it was bad writing, the, you know, it, it just didn't seem very inspired, the characters were off, everything just, like, all the other aspects besides some of the visuals were just brutal, like, it just wasn't good, in my opinion. And then there were these visuals, like, you know, eye candy, you know, slow-mo and everything like that, and that was, like, you know, the they put a lot of focus into that and it's just like okay but can you really think of the movie as being really great just because of that or do you look at the movie as a whole uh, and every other aspect to do with it and make your decision based on the package not just you know oh this is the visuals look really great you know can you really have a movie that's just focused on the art can you just you know, and just neglect the story, neglect the characters or anything like that. So, um, that's my opinion. Take it or leave it. It's fair if you don't agree, because art is subjective, but that is my opinion. Yeah. It's another Barbie movie. <laughs> uh, sounds like... Wait, sounds like what happened with Blade Runner for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I really enjoyed Blade Runner because like, I wasn't, I wasn't involved, like I didn't look at any of the marketing and I had just finished watching the first Blade Runner and then I went into the second Blade Runner. It felt like an exact continuation, like, a, like it just, it just continued basically. And I thought that was really great. I thought that they, they, they nailed it. Um, but I, I wasn't like, I wasn't looking at any of the marketing, so that didn't affect me. But yeah, like, I get it. Like, if you were expecting something super action packed or whatever, and you go and see that, you'd probably be like, wow. <laughs> oh my god, Sumerian. Oh, exactly, Lucky. Cuphead's main focus is the art. Yeah, but it's still it's still a good game though, you know? Like it still follows, you know, it's not, like it, it has like good game me mechanics basically. Like it's not just the art. Like you're not like it's not a broken game or anything like that. Anyways, I'm I'm talking you guys' heads off. I should keep working on this. No, I didn't see Justice League. I don't want- I actually don't want to after- like, it sucks, but like, I just don't- I don't know if I want to give my money to something like that, right? Like, I don't know if I want to encourage that sort of filmmaking, because that's not really- that's not what I- I believe in, personally. 
But then again, I, I went to film school and all. <laughs> it was a warm up for Wonder. Yeah, well, whatever. Question, if you don't mind, I have a tech review blog. I'm looking for someone to design you a logo and a header. Where on Twitch would I find someone to do that, if at all? Um, you just peruse around, but I would say I don't think anyone here is going to do it for free. If you're looking for a professional to do it, just make sure that you're uh, offering a fair price because I don't, I, no one here should believe in working for free. I'm just going to put that down right now. Like even, even if it's something that you're not really like benefiting uh, from financially, artwork is still a job. And I'm not, I'm not accusing you of any of this. I'm just putting it out as a, uh, as a disclaimer. That's all. But yeah, you can peruse the creative section. Maybe somebody there is a logo designer. I don't know any logo designers personally on Twitch. The... Cuphead is an example of a game where the art actually assists in the gameplay. Yeah, like, I mean, that's, that's, that's fair. That's totally fair. It's totally, totally fair. There we go. That's, yeah. <laughs> these to be bigger, bigger. It's about three. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. No fair. Like I like maybe I'll watch it when it comes out on DVD or something like that, or like on Netflix if it comes out on Netflix at some point. Like I just don't think I want to spend twenty bucks in the theater, right? <laughs> Own personal opinion. Yeah, totally fair. Nugget, totally fair. Uh, Thor is the all around great. Yeah, I enjoyed Thor. I enjoyed it. It was um felt very like almost like Guardians of the Galaxy ish. But I feel like they actually, like, Marvel's got their stride, like, they're catching their stride with uh, what Thor is, you know, what it wants to be. And it's a lot more enjoyable to watch. I like watching movies that are confident in the genre that they are trying to be, you know? Like, they're, they're not, as I was saying earlier, like, concept soup. They're not, like, movie soup. Like, you know, like, they're, they're confident in what they want to be. And something like Thor, or you know, or some of these these uh, these comic book characters, like some of them, like they just as a movie, I don't think that they should be taking themselves so seriously. And it's it's cool to see, it's cool to see, uh, you know, Marvel jumping on that a little bit better.
Oops. Did I just... Mm. You get you get free tickets and make movie reviews. Oh, sweet! That's pretty dope. That's awesome. To directional art, yeah, it was, he was pretty, he he did a good job. Uh, one thing you don't like about Marvel movies is they always ins insert jokes into moments that are supposed to be serious. Jokes are good, but when there's people dying, like a little weird list. Of yeah, there's a few moments that I was just like, okay, this feels a little bit shoehorny. Um, but, you know, like I, like, it's like, I, I understand why they do it though. You know, it's, a, it's supposed to be a lighthearted movie and they just kind of, they don't want people like going out of the theater at any point feeling like, ugh. But, I, I see what you mean. I totally see what you mean by, by that. We bring this up more. Looks like this this mouth can close. The bones crunching to me as they're making jokes. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of weird. See, I, I the reason why I don't want to go and see Justice League is I just already felt really awkward watching the trailer. Like, the trailers. I was just kind of like, okay, um... Like having having like the the freaking guy, what's his name? The the one that plays uh, Cal Drogo in Game of Thrones, whatever the actor's name is. Like having that guy like act like a surfer dude. Like I get it, he's Aquaman, but surfer dude really like it just didn't it didn't bode well with me, and I felt really awkward during that last trailer. You know, some people might like that though, but I I just I was really like confused welcome to gardening in the upside down oh my god hey drummer how are you
<laughs> Happy Thanksgiving! Ah, uh, thanks! I don't live in the, in the States, but to everybody in the States, happy, happy Thanksgiving. Already 4 a.m. Go to sleep, Mighty. Go to sleep. <laughs> DC does a reboot. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe. Yeah, I mean, like, they're kind of setting it up for potential reboot in the far future. <laughs> Two days in a row where projects getting finished up feels good. Oh, nice. Sweet. Getting projects finished feels good. Head to bed, but thanks for streaming. Yeah, no worries, Mighty. Get some good sleep. 4 a.m., man. Sleep. Sleep, sleep, sleep. A week left of November. Oh, man. Yeah, I know. Ugh. I can't wait to shave. Been a long November. Growing out my beard. No, okay. Bad joke. Not even funny. Stupid. My the team at uh, where we work right now has actually raised a couple thousand dollars, which is pretty sweet. I'm pretty proud of them. Everybody raising so much money for the from November for all the men's. It's good. It's good. <laughs> Mighty. Really? Is it? I don't know. I'm just kind of like, I'm kind of tired and chilling right now. I'm not really doing too much. Not not working super fast or anything. But if you enjoy it, that's what matters. I'm really glad that you enjoy it. I'm hoping I can be a little bit more entertaining in the future streams. What film am I if, uh, blah, 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 blah. Hello, I can speak. What film am I working on? I'm working on an, an animated feature film that I can't talk about. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, it's Canadian. <laughs> My accent sounds American. Uh, yeah, no, I'm Canadian. Canadian. Basically, I, I was from Toronto. I don't live in Toronto anymore, but uh, Toronto is basically the uh, Canadian New York City. So, I mean, like, there's not, like, I it just, it's kind of seamless. <laughs> Reboot? You're Australian, so you can't tell. That's fair. It's basically the same thing. Yeah. Wondering how. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> College, you did a November stash calendar to raise money for cancer stuff. <laughs> you were Mr. July one year. <laughs> That's fun. That's good.
Leg muscles, leg muscles. Oh wow, we're only at the two hour mark. Well, because it's the two hour mark, I think I am going to take a quick breakerino. I'm gonna take a nice stretch. You guys should probably get up and stretch as well. Don't want anybody getting them blood clots. They're bad, they're real bad. But I'll take this opportunity to do a few plugs um, before I take a break, which is right now you're watching on the Pixelogic channel. And there's a lot of other really amazing streamers that present their workflows and work here. So if you enjoy what I do, um, you would really enjoy what a lot of the other people do here. So definitely give this channel a follow, but if you like me specifically as well and you want to see more of like anything that I do, you're more than welcome to follow my channel, which is twitch.tv A underscore cubed, which you can see it, uh, you can see it right over here. Ding, ding, ding. So if you're interested in that, feel free. And uh, I'm I'm gonna take like a take like a five minute break in like a minute here. Then I'll come back to this. Probably be like, ew, this is kind of nasty. I want to change some stuff because I'll have like a fresh, uh, fresh, fresh view. There we go. Okay. Mm. And I'll be back in about two minutes. Just gonna take a quick stretch, grab a drink, and I'll be right back. Okay?
Hey. Hello. No UV stretching on the wall back. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Glad to be back. <laughs> Um, okay. Difference in the accent, really strange hearing it on the news. What do you mean? Like in, like, the diff- Oh, back in- Oh, I thought you said Kirkland. It's like, where's that? do some like work on the face area it is not getting much love here Hopefully that, that break wasn't too long for you guys. I, I just wanted to make like another tea because as I said, I'm very tired today. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> I had plenty of sleep, but it's just one of those days. Oh yeah, tea at 10 p.m. I'll still be able to sleep just fine. Some more of that weirdness. Get out of there. Right, probably gonna like split off these petals and make them also much larger. More defined. We're gonna start defining the shapes a little bit better in here. <laughs> Notice how I'm avoiding the feet area again. <laughs> I don't know why I always do that. I need to stop doing that.
Well, thank you, Reggie. I'm glad you like it. Very glad you like it. Oh, it's still on this. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm a professional streamer. <laughs> I mean, technically, the BRB being on the screen still isn't inaccurate. I mean, up here, I'm still AFK. make this tongue more pronounced as well I think the uh, the pollen like tongue like the little little bit at the end there all right So, because I have like this design language going on up here, I need to continue some of that throughout the body. I can't just kind of like, like you know, like the the pedal squiggles and stuff like that. Like I can't just leave it and let it do whatevs. Uh, how long did it take me to learn this skill? I've been sculpting for hmm. About four and a half years, I think, something like that. Four, four years, something about this. But I've been doing like art, like my whole, my whole life. Like since I could hold a pencil, I've been drawing and things like outside and dragons. Have always, I've always, I've just dra drawing dragons like since I was like, I, since I even knew what a dragon was. <laughs> I was just so obsessed with dragons when I was a kid. I've just been- I, I, I just love art. Like, I like creating things. It was, uh, I always found it more interesting to stay inside and create an entire world uh, based around my- you guys remember the Beanie Babies and uh, how they had like a whole line of dinosaur stuffed animals? I had a whole bunch of those and I would create like a world based on them and then I'd start like drawing little monsters and props that would go around in their world and things like that. Like, you know, fully flesh out their special abilities and stuff. Meanwhile, like, all these other kids are, like, you know, going and seeing... going, going to, like, Wonderland or... you know, other, like, amusement parks and... playing sports and... I was just kind of in my room. Or, you know, playing games with my brothers. It's definitely a weird one. I'm still a weird one, though, so... <laughs> nice, Anthony. Yeah. Yeah, my brothers and I actually used to do, like, we used to play outside a lot. Um, I remember actually when we got the PlayStation, there was this game called Champions of Norath, which was basically just like a Diablo clone. 
um, and my brothers and I just we just loved it. It was just so much fun to play and like especially with like a few people and we we knew like the cheat codes and stuff so you could carry as many items as you possibly could in your backpack and stuff like that and we would actually because we liked being outside so much and uh and we we lived in like a forested area we would actually like we would actually take an extension cord we get my dad to do this we would take an extension cord with a tv and the PlayStation and just like put it outside and build like a little mini fort outside under one of the trees and we would be playing Champions of Norath outside on the PlayStation under like under like a blanket fort under a tree with like pine needles on the ground and everything. Oh man. That was my childhood. <laughs> so that was that was some good times. That was really good. Just uh, just doing simple simple stuff like that, you know, just stupid stuff. But all of these little events that you do as a as a kid, it all kind of leads up to who you are as an artist later on. So. I think the the fact that I had two brothers, no sisters, or really any like female influence in my life kind of like pushed me in a little bit more of like this direction as well. I was always like a you know a tomboy growing up. It's only recently, like when I was in like college, that I'd be like, oh my god, makeup, dresses. So it's just just games and creatures. But then I then I worked on Barbie. <laughs> then I worked on Barbie. No, that's not my turning point. But yeah, it's just it's interesting to see how life and like how you grow up really kind of like affects who you are as an artist. How it all comes into play. Lego Wars and Nerf Wars, yo, the Lego forts we used to build. We had like tubs of Lego. Like we'd get it from like people who didn't like their they would just like sell it for their kids. Like we we just had like so much Lego that we got for cheap. We'd have like actual like, you know, like those big like Tupperware like tubs, like full of Lego. And we would just like for hours we would just build Lego words. Oh we man, BMX, right? Man, I didn't have actual I only rented BMX bikes when I was like uh when I was younger. I think I did it like twice and it was a lot of fun. Got hurt, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, did I do an extra stream? You saw. It. Oh man, Reggie, don't don't worry about it. If you can't make the streams, don't worry. But yeah, I I was doing like I'm doing this week like lunch crunches when I can. Um, it when I take a break from working on the stuff that I'm working on uh, professionally. And then I just kind of like start streaming for an hour or two during during lunchtime before getting back to work on um, on the film because like I'm I'm a remote artist I can do that <laughs> I could do that now but only only like if I had the time like so that's why I did it on on Monday because I had the or Tuesday or Monday. Yeah, you know, oh man, my my mind is messed up. I don't even know what is time anymore. I might do one tomorrow as well, if I can. And I do those on my my channel. If anybody's curious, I don't do that on the Pixelogic channel. This this channel I do specifically um, one-off creature designs, and if I enjoy enjoy what I kind of made on this channel, then I bring it over to my channel and I continue the sculpt, just like you saw earlier with the, the parasite. Like the, the sea parasite thing. What days? Um, it's not specific. That's the thing. Like, I just, I, I don't really like advertise it either because it's like a no mic, no cam uh, stream. It's just sort of like, you know, you can watch me sculpt something 
for an hour or two and then I'm gonna get back to work. Like, it's not really like super interactive or anything. The interactive streams that I do on my channel are on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. EST, and then here on Pixelogic, I do them on Wednesdays on, at 8 p.m. EST. But you know, I don't, I don't always feel like you know, it's just I don't always feel like putting on pants. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm kidding. I always have pants on. Or do I? Most hurt you ever got was when your foot slipped off the pedal. The pedal. Oh, ooh, ah, la 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 la. Nope. <laughs> but look. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I've never gotten like seriously cut when I've been like injured, like you know, like a cut injury. I like the most injured I've ever gotten was when I used to play uh, football, and I dislocated my. My kneecap, my, it went behind, like almost fully behind my leg and broke a bunch of tendons and I was in like a cast for over a month. I couldn't walk. I was bad. That was in like the seventh grade and then I stopped playing sports. <laughs> I was like, screw sports. Still trying to get like a little bit of like a, a little bit more of a balance here, so I'll probably keep playing around with uh, playing around with this overall shape here. I haven't saved in a while. I should probably save. I should. Oh yeah, I should save. Plenty of scars to show you the world though, yeah. I don't have I don't really have scars at all. I just get like I just have like this crack in my like in my leg. Like if I like if I do a lot of squats, eventually you're gonna start hearing like because <laughs> like I messed my leg up. <laughs> Cutting a board in your hand. <laughs> No, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't. I'm sorry. I can't. I don't like imagining that. Like, I make all of, like these nasty squeamish characters, but then like when I think of somebody getting hurt, I just, I feel it, you know, like I'm very, like, <laughs> I'm a little bit like, I guess, I guess like empathetic that way and I don't like it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like it. Let's change the topic. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> no. So, guys, <laughs> I, I actually don't know what to talk about. I'll just keep talking about what I'm sculpting here. Um, I'm, I'm making up some joints right now, adding extra joints to this guy's arm because I don't really like, I think maybe if I think of this part as uh, the shoulder bit, because Technically, if it has this many arms, we'd want, yeah, we'd want like another set of uh, pecs to control the head. So let me just put in another set of pecs, <laughs> just casually. Here's another set of pecs for you. And then underneath all of this, we'll have like the serratus. That then is supposed to go into where the abs sit, but I'm kind of, I'm kind of playing right here. I'm just playing. Let's get that, that rib cage looking like it's nice and pushed out.
<laughs> no. Guys, oh my god, ew. I can't. I don't want to think about it. It is a hungry flower. <laughs> it's a very hungry flower. He's a he's a pretty princess. Inspired by Demogorgon. No, I actually wasn't thinking of that when I just kind of like started doing this. I was like, I just realized that like as I created petals, I was like, yeah, I guess that is like you know that's gonna come up a lot. People are gonna be like, oh yeah, it's Demogorgon. But you know, whatever. <laughs> All right, no worries, Torta. Have a uh, have a great trip home and a great evening. Was the Demogorgon's name in season two? I don't think that, there weren't any Demogorgons in season two, from what I like, not the same kinds. Uh, I think they, they they were like calling them like Demodogs or something like that, <laughs> like <laughs> the Demodogs.
<laughs> dart. Oh yeah, Dart. Yeah, Dart was great. I don't want to talk too much about spoilers though, so just in case people here are wanting to watch it still. Yeah, it's just a chill sesh. Just super chill. But again, if you guys have any questions, like always, just ask away. It's totally fine. You could ask whatever. I mean, if we keep it modeling uh, related, then I'm sure most people here are looking for that kind of information. But if you have any other questions, that's totally cool. I don't mind. Like, how do you even life? Well, start by getting up in the morning, uh, eating your breakfast, recommend something a little bit with a little bit of bran in it so that your day is nice and easy. And uh, make sure you're getting your vitamin C, walk outside to get your vitamin D. And then Either pick up a pencil, do some work, go get some exercise, look at cute puppies, 
either in real life or on the internet. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> sure, art imitates life. I mean, yeah, I guess. I mean, yes, definitely. I mean, maybe. All right, good night, Doug. Have a great sleep. Happy Thanksgiving uh, to you as well. Who's excited for them Black Friday deals? <laughs> I'm not. Everything is like, I don't know, everything that I always look at for Black Friday deals, it's like the exact same regular price. It's like, but they had like marked it up previously and then they were just like marking it down again. I don't know. Maybe that's just my luck. I feel like I never get any good deals on Black Friday. <laughs> but that's this Friday. And this Friday is also Danny Mac. And Danny Mac is his birthday. <laughs> Sounds like too much work already. I know life is a lot of work. It is a lot of work, but if you wanna you, you know, if you wanna do anything uh, particularly um, meaningful. <laughs> <laughs> then you gotta put in the work. But I'll be the first to admit that some days I just don't want to. <laughs> some days if I know that I don't have like a ton of work to do, then I just lay in bed. Until, until I'm like, nah, okay, gotta get, gotta do something, gotta feel productive. World of Final Fantasy just for the new Steam updates. Nice. <laughs> no problem, <laughs> Knight. Hey, assassin. You're gonna go to college? Sweet. Congrats. Where you? What are you studying? Computer science to be a uh, a programmer, pretty sweet, pretty sweet. Nope, I actually I wanted to be a programmer when I was in uh, high school. 
but then, uh, and then I just didn't. <laughs> and then I just didn't. I, like, forgot everything to do with math, too. They gave me an award for it at high school. They were like, oh my god, you're, like, the best and this is <laughs> at, at math. You're so good at math. And then I just, like, didn't. And now I don't know how to do math anymore. <laughs> Live on Friday, you want to watch? Um, per perhaps I might do a lunch crunch sort of thing. It won't be a uh, won't be a mic and cam stream if I do go live on Friday. It would be in the afternoon EST. We'll see. Uh, no, no guarantees. I w I'm trying to do the lunch crunchy things, but if I'm too busy, then I won't be able to. And I won't I won't be live this weekend either. I've got guests uh, visiting from Toronto. Yay! Franz. Grace. Yeah, I figured people would say it looks like a Demogorgon, but that's because it's based off of a flower. A lot of uh, the uh, the Demogorgon sort of stuff was sort of based off of flowers too, I'm assuming. Just, uh, just not a, about programming to be here. Oh. oh man, Joanne. Yeah, like, yeah. I think that's kind of the same sort of, well, I mean, like, I didn't fail programming. Like, I, I, I took, um, not basic, I took, uh, God help me, JavaScript and, uh, C. But I was just kind of like, <laughs> like, I think what I really enjoyed about it was finally solving a problem that you've been like working on for a really long time and just having like those eureka moments. But I found that I can have like those eureka moments in art as well. And so then I just kind of didn't, it wasn't really like my thing, but I res definitely respect the people who who are programmers who can like you know deal with the headaches of programming every single day and actually enjoy it demogorgon's cousin <laughs> i should upload more on my youtube channel yeah if i i plan on doing that once my contract wraps i'll be doing a lot more a lot, a lot more videos, more like, you know, time-lapse stuff and uh, maybe to like mini tutorials or something. But right now, like my YouTube channel just has the two videos, the owl and the doom dragon. But 
But thank you, I appreciate it. I really do appreciate it. Towers for NASA, dang. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm pretty sure, like, the people who work for NASA, like, they probably, yeah, like you said, they'll just love it, right? I mean, if you were working for, like, something to do with, like, space, like, after space, like, that's so cool. That's so cool. That, that would be so sick. I don't, I'm not good enough at like math and stuff anymore though, in order to, to do something like that. Which kind of bums me out sometimes, but I can, I can appreciate from afar. I don't know if you guys saw those images that came back from, uh, from Jupiter. Those were absolutely gore, like gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous images. I love space. It's so cool. It just like blows my mind at how big everything is, you know? Like sometimes you just forget. You just totally forget that you're just small. You're just so, so tiny. <laughs> Degree in math, high stand. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Saw a big ceramic tile mural at school. This was back in the mid '90s. Lots of problem solving. Yeah, no kidding. That would be pretty. That would be pretty intense. It's all about problem solving. Oh, cool. Construction, huh? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I guess it would be. I never really thought about that. My theory on file management, uh, how do I name and keep track of my projects and versions? Um, okay, well, yeah, there's, uh, file management is actually kind of interesting. I, I like to go on a, you know, so every single project that I have has sort of like a master file, uh, master folder. So I would have one folder, um, based on, 
uh, you know, what the project is, and all of that is filed under if it's a sculpt, if it's just like, you know, um, well, no, 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 like I, I, I have like a master art folder, and then everything under that, I would have the project name, and then inside of that, I would have the different steps of it. So anything to do with like sculpting, I would have in a folder and I would name everything as that project file name and then an underscore and then the 001002003, depending on the iteration. And I would have it like that. And then if something specific happened with that file, what I would end up doing is have another underscore and like label what it was, like let's say like merged the file or something like that. Um, so that I know exactly like which one is doing what or like this is the posed version, etc. And then I would have another folder for if I want, you know, like renders and then another folder for paint overs and basically that thing. And it would be all underneath like the main project file folder. But basically it just kind of like I I don't I don't work on like massive projects in terms of like, you know, like a film, for example. Like I don't have that as like my own personal project, so I don't uh, worry about exact naming conventions or anything like that, but I do try to make sure that what I am saving has some sort of a uh, uh, a it, like a number number iteration. Final, final V2. I used to do that and it was a nightmare. I couldn't find anything. I had to keep opening projects, opening projects, opening projects. Where is the next, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? So stupid. <laughs> Untitled new, new, new one. Oh my God. Day six final, no close. Literally just save that. No, don't do that, Lance. Don't do that. <laughs> but hello. Oh my god. How's up? How's up? I think I think a lot of people do uh, name their their files that way, and sometimes I catch myself some doing that as well when I feel like something isn't important enough to name properly. But it 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 is annoying trying to find it later, and it's uh, I just feel like I I should just name things properly all the time now. Like I can't I can't deal with that annoying like file chasing. 
Ugh. Especially when you have a whole bunch of different drives, like... I don't have only one desktop on my computer. I have a few different desktops depending on, you know, the project that I'm working on. If it's like, you know, like I, I, I don't, I don't keep all of my stuff on my main desktop. I have a, like, you know, a separate desktop on my same computer. And so like when I'm looking for files, and I've got so many drives, I'm just like, mm, <laughs> name it properly. Hey, Malone. What's up? What is this I'm working on? Just a, just a for funsies concept, a sandbox sculpting session. Started it from a sphere today. Actually, I should probably save. I have not been saving very much um, this, this time around. Lightbox is so awesome. It shows thumbnails. Yeah, yeah. Doing mech pieces, you back up each piece, so you end up with a hundred pieces. Oh my god, that's been, that's that's insane! But you know what? If that's necessary, <laughs> oh my gosh, that naming though, I can't, <laughs> I can't. Thanks, Rename. How are you? Oh, it loves cuddles, yeah. No, it definitely loves cuddles. You should definitely cuddle it. Definitely.
Day of the Triffids novel? Oh, cool. I didn't, I don't know what that one is. Sounds neat. Hey, Tabor, how are you? <laughs> That's a funny emote. Uh, maybe head pat head pats no 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 full on full on cuddles like it just wants it wants like you know that forearm super grippy hug anything less and it'll start screeching Nineteen fifty one post vaca with the Is that the Ooh. Ooh, that sounds intriguing. I'm gonna oh man, I'm gonna look that up because I I've been looking for something good to read and that sounds really fun. I'll keep that tab. I'm gonna keep that tabbed. I might I might read that. Glad to be out of the Montreal cold. Did you work uh, on Space Girl any further? No, I didn't. I didn't work on Space Girl any further. I can show you where I left off with her, though. Uh, let's see. So what they're talking, what what um, what Tabor was talking about was uh, yesterday on my channel. I just started a quick. Um, I think it's this one. I started like just doing a quick like quick stylized kind of sculpt of a girl, which I'm gonna like edit a bunch um, on the and spend very much time on this one. Get rid of that. But she's gonna be sort of like an astronaut. I want to like pull down the collar and stuff like that. And obviously, I haven't really like done anything with the the actual uh, suit or anything, but I want it to be kind of fashion based. So this is going to be bigger and the collar is going to be smaller and stuff. But yeah, that's what I was doing on my channel. Seen Day of the True Foods in a long time. Yeah. Oh, is it? Uh, is it not just a novel? It's also a, uh, it's also a movie. Oh. Hmm. Weird, I've never heard of it before. Strange. I will go and check that out. Combine the two for an epic space battle. <laughs> Please.
Sorry for the yawns. Final boss in Jumanji. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Have I ever done anything with human kitty ears? Uh, hu human kitty ears? What, you mean like anime? No. No, I'm not really, that's not really, that's not really my thing. I do stylized human characters, but they're not, uh, they're not like, I wouldn't say that they're like, They're, they're not they're not like that basically there's lots of other artists that do that kind of stuff actually some of some there's some uh, some of those kinds of artists on um, on this channel here if you follow if you follow this channel there's actually people who do um, uh, sculpting for 3d printing so they do figure sculpting like figurine sculpting and a lot of it there's maybe like half of uh, the people here that do that kind of stuff do like uh, anime related uh, figurines so you can check that out <laughs> Anthony <laughs> why do I hate oh my gosh next please please I don't hate anyone. I just don't partake in certain things myself. That's all. That's all. Hey HP1, how are you?
All right, we have about about fifty five zero minutes left of this guy, and uh, and then we're gonna have to call it. So if you have any questions, ask them now. Steam sales started. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm trying to avoid. I like I'm I've been having like a problem with games in general. Like I get I get too into playing games, so I try and like limit my exposure. <laughs> <laughs> I make it sound so bad, but like I, I can't I can't play a lot of games because then I just don't get anything done. It's like one or the other for me. What are you thinking of buying next? Shadow of War, 40%, Nier on Man, 40, Wolfstein, 50, with Dishonored, 50, oh my gosh. <laughs> or read the, or the audiobook is good? Oh, okay, cool. Best read of perspective of being blind in the scenario, fair enough. Don't know what it is, but watching sculpting is totally zen. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like a lot of people think that, and I'm glad to offer that to offer it. Hey Dan, what's up? You missed the ZBrush party? No, we're still going for another five zero minutes. Fifty. What made me decide to stream sculpting and ZBrush? Well, I suck at games. <laughs> uh, no, um, I I just kind of like a lot of my 
a lot of my friends and my brother and my boyfriend all kind of said like you're an entertaining person to talk to you should try streaming and i was just like well i don't really like i want to do stuff at home like maybe i'll try like try streaming but like what should i do and i realized at that moment that oh hey you know like maybe streaming would help me with uh maybe streaming would help me with my uh with my sculpting like getting getting stuff done and lo and behold it did it helped me focus so can't really can't really say what in the world But yeah, that's that's basically um, that's basically why I started sculpting is because other people told me that it would be it would be fun and good, and it was. <laughs> but you know, the entertaining to talk to thing, like I don't know, I don't feel like I feel like a lot of the time I'm just kind of like chill and quiet. Especially when I am really tired, so I apologize for not being super entertaining, but hopefully at least you can find the streams uh, relaxing. Just need to get your health insurance to pay for yourself. <laughs> what? Did I do some test streams? Is there still an episode one out there? Um, there's an episode one of Pixelogic, but I was streaming already for like a year before I started streaming on Pixelogic right here on this channel. Um, I didn't know how to record VODs back then. So no, there's no like, you, you can't see an episode one. But I can tell you my first stream, I wasn't talking at all. I was just kind of... Uh, I was just kind of sculpting. I was just sculpting some, some random girl. <laughs> and I was getting pranked a whole bunch because, like, I had quite a few viewers for my first stream. It was kind of strange. And, um, I got, I got really pranked, like, with those, like, knocking gifts and stuff. Like, the, the knocking prank with the cats and stuff. So I like I had no idea what any of that was when I just kind of like joined Twitch being like, you know, this could be fun. And uh, <laughs> and I was just getting I was just getting trolled right off the bat. Like, I basically started streaming sculpting because, like, I didn't know what else I had to, like, what else I would be okay with streaming because, like, my, like I said, my first stream, like, it wasn't, like, I was, like, really nervous and stuff. Like, I didn't even want to, like, talk. But then I, I started talking and I realized people are friendly here in creative. So I wanted to stay in creative because people are super friendly here. And I started realizing I really liked helping people, uh, just help inspire them, motivate them. And then that turned into this. Now I'm streaming a lot. Well, a lot being two times a week at least. Once on my channel and once on the Pixo channel here. On that job hunt. Oh, thanks, Dan. Well, good luck with your job hunt. Have I saved and drinked something recently? Yeah, I have. Don't worry. I'm good. Thank you, Reggie. I thought I loved to be trolled. Yeah, more like I've gotten used to it. <laughs> I'd say it's more of a I've just gotten used to it, um, sort of a thing.
<laughs> Don't deny it. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry, next. I love being trolls. <laughs> Just for you. Thinking Z room is your model and you lost 20 to 30% of details. Um, well, you're gonna, uh, HP, you're gonna want to reproject your details from your high res mesh uh, into your Z room, like your Z room mesh model. That's how they get you. Everybody pretends to be nice. All of a sudden, you're a sculpting room experts 24-7. Nope. <laughs> uh, when did I start sculpting? Maybe like four and a half-ish years ago, something like that. Let's see what else is in this IMM pack. I can use. Hmm. Ah, uh, yeah. I guess I could. have a rib cage sticking in them. <laughs> oh yeah, I kinda like that. So something that I actually like to do sometimes is take uh, the IMM brushes and just kind of uh, just kind of see like if I can get any kind of cool design out of just, you know, keep bashing a bit of stuff. It's just kind of funny how like all this actually just like lined up with the, the lines that I already had down. It's kind of it's kind of sweet actually. Makes my life easier. Like a gorilla, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was assuming that like it kind of just, it did a lot of like stuff with its arms, which is why its arms are so big. <sighs> Poop. Thanks.
This thing have lights and be translucent too. <laughs> Staff. Be transfer a stream with my paint over workflow, uh, for favor. Um like I would, but the the problem is the problem is like anytime I'm rendering in Keyshot uh and I have OBS running, it's very laggy. <laughs> So, like, any key shot work that I do, it just gets really, like... Like, I've tried it before, it's not a fun stream, it really isn't. But... But... Um, I can sh give you a video that is on my... Uh, on my channel. In this video, basically, my my YouTube channel, uh, that that will show you basically what I do. Like a, like it's a simplified version. Some things I do a little bit more complex. Yeah, I'm like, if I could, I would, but it's just it's not a fun stream. It's just not fun for any of us, like, cause it's so laggy. I, I get really frustrated when when it's like so laggy I can barely move something around so until I get some sort of like crazy computer upgrade I'm gonna say no key shot streams Yeah, that's just like a, kind of like a simplified version. Like I, I did that for the Doom Dragon. It was like I did a video um, for a milestone thing. Like w when my stream hit a certain number of followers, I kind of like put out a video, and I was thinking of doing that for uh, more followers um, milestones in the future. But we'll see. We'll see. Because it does take a little bit of time for me to compile all the videos and everything like that. Ah, uh, editing life. Could never be a YouTuber. I don't know how they do that. Daily vlogs? I don't know how they compile that kind of stuff. And edit it. What happened to the egg? What do you mean, Blands? What egg? Talking about the, uh, the astro- the astronauty lady? Alrighty. 
I realized since starting uh, streams on the Pixelogic channel, I feel like um, I've definitely gotten more efficient at getting like a generalized, full-bodied concept done within the time frame and talking at the same time, which I think is kind of it's cool because I'm always thinking like, you know, am I improving? Am I improving? Are like, you know, as an artist, like I'm always thinking, am I improving? Can I improve more? And so I think it's kind of neat to like, I was looking back at like some older streams just for reflection purposes. And I was like, oh, okay. You know, like I can, I can see, I can see it getting a little bit better. I know that's kind of like random to say, but I was just, it's just like a passing thought that I had earlier today and I was just like a little bit concerned of the work that I was putting out, like if I was, uh, if I was getting any better, if I was stagnating, imposter syndrome, blah blah blah, <laughs> chocolate egg I had, it was huge. What? Oh, are you talking about the, the Kinder Egg? The giant chocolate Kinder Egg? This is what the Kinder, like, size was. And this is like the stupid toy that came out of it. So dumb. So, so dumb. The first alien I did on streaming took way long. Well, that's see that 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 gives me confidence that I am improving, and that's what like that what that's what I think matters the most. It's just you know maybe I'm not improving at like a super fast rate, but at least there is improvement, and I'll keep working towards that. Just want to keep getting better. Don't want to stop. Can't stop, won't stop. Yeah, consistency definitely, definitely is, uh, definitely is a thing that I have to, that anybody who wants to improve needs to do, uh, focus on is just be really consistent about practicing every day or at least every other day, whenever you can. Probably spends a lot of time here. I spent a lot of time making that. I don't think so, man. I don't know. <laughs> hey, Ferrix, thank you. Track my brush switches since I, oh, well, the, you don't have to track the brush switches. I can tell you what are the general things that I use. Um, I have them mapped to my one through zero keys. Number one, I have as clay buildup. Two, I have as damn standard. Three, I have as H polish. Four, as snake hook. Five, as inflate. And those are the five like main brushes that I use. Anything else is like extra. Um, I also really enjoy using the pinch brush though, which is on six. Six, I, I use the pinch brush a lot for defining planes. One of your favorite quotes next is. Nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a pro proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated de derelicts. <laughs> persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. The slogan, press on, has solved and will always solve the problems of the human race. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. Or is your streams are making a difference? Just keep the acute mind Aw, oh, thanks Blands. I appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Next, have you ever thought of just like streaming, like sculpting then? Because like the thing is like, I don't, I don't do really like monotonous or sort of, like boring tasks on my channel. Like I try to avoid like doing like really boring like 
uh, topology work or uh, UVing or anything like that because I'm, I'm like, well, what would I personally want to watch? Because you're not, you're you're a good sculptor. You should should uh, should try that. Cause yeah, I just I, I feel like it's better for me to just like that's that's kind of like why I do V sessions where I just like concept sculpt uh really quickly from a sphere rather than um you know retopping something. Especially if it's like a four hour session. Like if it was like a one hour stream, then maybe, but like I'm here for four hours. You guys wanna, <laughs> I don't think you wanna see four hours of like retop work or anything like that. Oh, you enjoy that more than the fast sketch? Yeah, then that, that's fair, that's totally fair. Oh, that's so great, Parish. That's great to hear. That's so good to hear. I like hearing that. I really do enjoy hearing that. Block out time to sculpt along for fun and practice. Yeah, like that's that's sort of like the goal here, right? Is uh, just get other people to be motivated to just kind of take a break. Like these 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 uh. These sessions are are not like you know something you would use all the time like maybe you like the design but it's not something you would use as like a final product or anything like that like if you really did enjoy um the design you were making then you would like you know push it to the next level as next was saying um and like i i showed an example of one of the things that i i did on stream uh, on my own channel that i had pushed to another level past uh, just these sketches but um yeah like it's it's always it's always really good to see that other people are just kind of like taking the time to give to themselves as artists like you know you can't always unless unless it is something that you really enjoy um is just like always doing projects based off of like, you know, somebody else's work or whatever, that's totally fine if that's if that is something that you really enjoy doing. And I know that there are people that are like that. But I know also that there are the very artsy, artsy fartsy kind of people. And you know, even if there's like an ounce of that in you, you just want to create, then it's good to just kind of like feed that for yourself sometimes. And that's sort of like what these sessions are about. Just kind of have fun. See what your mind comes up with. Who knows? How did I do the ribs? Oh, the ribs. Yeah, so this was this is actually a, a modified IMM. Um, it's uh, from the Dragonbone IMM. They, you can insert an entire like rib cage, like you can see here. And I just kind of like pushed it around a bit on top of like the scope that I was doing. Oops. No worries, Mutex. <laughs> Music was perfect for the dialogue. <laughs> yeah, everybody, everybody's, everybody's great here. You're in finals and all you want to do is sculpt. Oh, Ferrix, but they're finals. Once you're done, you're done. So that's good. Yes, you're beautiful. You're all beautiful.
So glad I found your stream. I'm a girl in digital animation program in New York, and it's so awesome to see another. Really hard to build up using our skills. Absolutely. Ah, uh, yeah. No, it's great. It's great to see that other girls are kind of like joining in because I know this industry is like in animation there are quite a few uh women animators but in terms of like modelers and uh sculptors I find that there there aren't as many and so like if you know if you're a girl and you're interested in doing this it's it's pretty cool to see you here honestly I I I'm honored <laughs> But yeah, try it. Try your best, Blushy. Try your best. Just uh, as Nex was saying earlier, and I completely agree with him, is persistence is key. Just keep at it, and uh, and you will will definitely get somewhere. Definitely. Just never forget, though, that you know you need to feed yourself as an artist, and what I mean by that is just do what you like to do you know the more time you spend doing things that you don't like doing as an artist the more it's gonna negatively affect uh, you and what you want to do what you originally set out to do your original goal so don't forget to just take breaks and have fun with like sculpting the kind of stuff that you want to sculpt And with that, we crashed. <laughs> so, um, we have 20 minutes left. All right. <laughs> cool. Is uh, 4R8 crashy compared to R7? No, not with all the patches that uh, came out. Um, I'm on patch 2. They fixed a lot of like, the, the, the initial releases stuff. Like It's actually really stable now. I think there's just something wrong with, um, with my, my, uh, my scratch disk right now. So when it autosaves, sometimes it like there's like abnormal like, crashes or whatever abnormal terminations When I crash, it's usually, usually so positive mental attitude. <laughs> At Nomen, we scream save check, so all the people in the lab saved. Oh my gosh, yeah. I, I have like a, on my channel, like when I'm sculpting uh, live, there's a command called just like, ha like exclamation mark save, and then it just like, Moobot, like the, the bot in chat just yells at me to save, so it yells at the whole chat to save. But yeah, I gotta always be saving. This one, this one uh, recovered just fine though. 
he went there five years ago. Man, that's... Oh, yeah, thinking of, like, when I went to school, it's been a while. Not that that long ago, but just, like, I don't realize how much time has gone by. You're trying so hard to get into Nomen? Oh, really, Plushie? It's, uh, it's a lot of money. That's all I remember. <laughs> And I know that there's a lot of like really, really great teachers there as well, obviously, but all I can think about is like, it's so expensive. No, 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 I'm not saying I'm- no, 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 that's not what I was getting at, Tuart. I'm not saying I'm old. I know I'm not old. I know I'm not old, but it just feels like- I just forget, like, how much- how fast the time is going by. Because some days I'm like, you know, people ask me, how old are you? And I have to, like, think for a second, because I'm like, I'm not 21. <laughs> I am not 21. I'm not 21. <laughs> that freaks me out sometimes. Getting two degrees at your community college, one in digital animation and one in illustration, trying to get into schools for a transfer. You'll, you know, just keep working at it, Fleshy. I believe. I believe in you. All 3D artists you follow on Twitch stop working on stream a couple of weeks after, so I'm kind of scared. <laughs> what? What do you mean, stop working on stream? Aww. No, I've been I've been pretty consistent. I I, I really enjoy streaming on Twitch. <laughs> Thanks. No, I'm not I'm not 21. Oh man, sorry. Eyelash and I. <laughs> Ancient. Oh my God, please. Ancient. Please. Oh, when when anybody calls themselves ancient, I'm just do like why? You're not ancient. <laughs> no one's ancient unless you're like a hundred years old. If you're a hundred, then maybe, maybe, because you've just like you've seen such an advancement in technology and society in general that like I feel like I can call you ancient, but if you're like even if you're like, if somebody's like 50 or 60, I'm just like, you're not ancient. Like, still have potentially half of your life left. <laughs> potentially. If you live in a, you have enough health insurance. <laughs> You're a hundred mares? Dang, boy! <laughs> Dang! Good for you. <laughs> there you go, there's Jiren. There it is. Not ancient. 
not ancient. <laughs> Jeez. That creature would be ancient? Yeah, I mean, okay, you can call the creature ancient. That's fine. That's fine. That's that's fine. <laughs> Who's we got for rotary phones and only three networks on TV till this? What a ride! Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. You're old when you want to use a smooth version. I don't know, man. I think, like, as, as much as, like, the wrinkles and stuff kind of scare me like whatever like I feel like you know when I get to like 50 I'm finally gonna start looking like I'm like old enough like maybe like 60 I'll start looking like I'm old enough to just like do whatever I want in public and nobody's gonna say anything to you because you're just a crazy old person that's gonna be fun that'll be fun. that's like something that I'm like you know what like I'm not I shouldn't be scared of getting old <laughs> Uh, <laughs> thanks, JC. I appreciate it. Black and white single TV over here. Oh, wow. Single network. Dang. The crazy eye and allows you to do all that stuff much <laughs> earlier than 60. Oh, well, you know, like I do have the crazy eye, but I also, like, I can definitely do the crazy eye, which you guys will not see. <laughs> but I don't really, I don't really want to do that until, like, I'm like, I've, like, developed the mindset of just, like, not caring. Because I still care. <laughs> still young enough to care. I haven't learned my lessons yet. All right, I think I'm gonna call it here. Um, does anybody have any other, like, questions or anything like that before I just kind of, like, do my, uh, my end spiel? Thanks, JC. I appreciate it. The back is- yeah, it's because, like, I use the IMM. The IMMs. Just makes it faster, like, if you have, like, you know, if you can kitbash, like, design or whatever. Just makes that faster. Here, let's see if I can get a, like, a back view right here. And, uh, get a, a front view. There he is.
Alright, good night you guys. Anybody who's dipping out right now. Um... <laughs> Looks like something you could kill to make sick looking Warframe skin. <laughs> oh man. Life's an adventure. Enjoy the ride, exactly! Resting murder face is gonna look badass with some salt and rings. <laughs> oh man. Okay, yeah. So if you guys uh, if you guys enjoyed this, um, be sure to check out. Uh, let's see who's next on here. Um, oh, okay. Tomorrow is uh, Victor Marin. Oh, uh, yeah, Victor Marin is tomorrow, so be sure to check him out at 12 p.m. PST uh, Thursday, and g make sure to follow Pixlogic for updates of, like, you know, the schedule or, you know, when uh, when anybody on this channel goes live, because there's many artists that stream to this specific channel on Pixlogic, but if you uh, enjoy me and my silliness, uh, feel free to follow me on uh, my own channel, which I dropped in chat, or I will do a quick, um, hello, I'm over here now, right here, this one, right here, mm. okay, yeah, there we go, and uh, if you need any socials, you'll be able to follow all of that from my Twitch channel, which I just linked in chat as well. Uh, and, uh, anything else? Anything else to add, my friends? I think I'm just gonna give you guys one last turnaround, show you what happened. See? See him? Straight view. Yup. Sad view. Yup. Back view. Yup. And a juicy three-quarter. So thank you guys so much. I will see you next time. Uh, and uh, I stream on my channel on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. EST and Wednesdays on the Pixelogic channel at 8 p.m. EST. So be sure to go and check out the guy uh, the rest of the week and Victor Marin. Marin. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Good night. See you. How's up? Woo!